Welcome back to another week of the Caged Vision podcast. Carrie Rome with Lisa Beck. And Lisa, this is we've we've worked hard to continuously work to improve our sound quality. So today we have new microphones and it's really kind of funny because we always stand up when we record the podcast but like now we have these big sort of boom type mics across the table and so we'll we'll see y'all y'all let us know if the sound quality is Let us is, know if it's, if it's better. better. Says we we can tell already. Yes, we can. It's, it's kind probably, of weird though. It's it is a little bit weird. I feel very official. I feel constrained. Yes. Cuz I have to stay in one spot a little bit. Yes. And normally for those of you listening, we walk around. So. Yeah. Yeah. So Lisa, we're talking about a subject that's near and dear to my heart, which is golf. <laughs> Well, I'm already laughing because I know for a fact you don't play golf. So do tell why this subject is near and no, dear. No, no. The story is that uh, we're, my in-laws were in town uh, last week, a week before, or something like that. Memorial Day? Yeah. Yeah. And they were in town, and uh, is there a washout? I mean, just complete rain out Memorial Day. So I'm thinking, what in the world are we going to do? I've got uh, one of my daughters was uh, out uh, she was out of town uh, with my family back in Baton Rouge. Two daughters, 13 and 10, my wife and my in-laws. My father-in-law plays golf. My mother-in-law, not so much, right? So we're thinking, what can we do? And she, I said, well, what about Top Golf? And I'd never been. My wife had never been. Um, I've played golf with my father-in-law, who's a pretty good golfer. I'm not so much. A funny story I'll go to in a second. But we went to Top Golf, and my mother-in-law could tell was not really that excited about it. But we got there, and it was so much fun. For me, it was fun because we were all interacting, and we're having a great time, and they served beer. But... It just seemed like all-encompassing. If I looked to my left, the group, the family was there. I would never see on a golf course. A family to the right. It wasn't even a family. It was, it was three you know, 13, 14-year-old daughters or, or uh, girls. And I'm thinking, this is amazing because someone looked at the old model one day and said, why does this make sense to have a driving range where there's only 10 slots and where you only sell uh, a small, medium, large bucket of ball. That doesn't make sense. What if, and I just had so much fun thinking about the process that they went through to unlock their caged vision. And the funny thing about Top Golf is that is exactly how it happened. Is there it really? Were, yeah, it is. So there were twin brothers, and they were in England because the first Top Golf was created in England. But but they were doing exactly that. They were on a driving range, and they were like, "Okay, how do we make this better? Only so many people can do this. This is not a lot of fun." They couldn't get people to go with them. And so they sort of turned it upside down and said, "How do we make this a game? How do we get we get younger people involved?" And so they created their first top golf back in like 2000, the year 2000. Now they have like 42 top golfs in the US uh, and the UK, and 13 million people go to top golf a year. Well, as of 2017. I was talking to one of the guys, and I said, You know, I know uh, a friend that's in construction and he's in business development, and he has a, you know, the year long come anytime membership, whatever. And I said, He just has meetings here. And so, he, he, like a lunch meeting, they'll go and they'll uh, eat lunch and hit some golf balls, and it's a great business development. He said, they have some people that don't even have offices. This is their office. They okay. come here and they work in a bin. Let's do that. That sounds like so much well, fun. Well, the podcast might get a little noisy because it's next to the interstate here in Birmingham. Well, we like, have our new mics. Well, we could always come back to the office to like maybe record or something. But we I'm do need to have an outing. We definitely need a top golf. But think party. about you know what is if you ever gone to a driving range? Yeah, but I'm I'm not a big golfer. Okay, but what is it that that you hated the most? Other than the actual driving a golf ball. 
aspect Just start, give it. me, give me, unpack it all. Like, unpack it all. Like, you're driving up it, perception, you, everybody. You yeah, got some guy that's trying to, you know, hit it 800 yards, and he's roiding out each time he swings it, and then... Yeah, and then, well, and it's not very interactive, right? So it's not, yes. there's not a lot of conversation that happens on a driving range, and you have to be quiet, and it's too, a lot, very serious. And, you know, you just are hitting that same, there's no, it's not fun. It's not fun. It's just not fun. It's not fun. So think about if you are someone, and the only thing that you had ever known is, I need to buy a straight, rectangle sort of plot of land. <laughs> I need to smooth out some parts in the front and put some sand and make 10 or 12, however wide I can make it, because you can't, you can't stack people in front of each other. That was how self-limiting that was. And then you got to put some nets up so you don't lose the balls. How do you ever make money in that? I don't understand people like in a random like have that. So here we are. They are in London. Is that was it London? Well, they were outside of London. Okay, nevertheless, crowded. England. Not a, not a lot of farmland available where they are, you know, so they figure all right, we can't go wide. This rectangle box doesn't work unless we can go up. up. Isn't that awesome? It's so much fun. So they so they took this everybody else's caged vision was it has to be this way because it's always been done, done that way, right? And so they said, no, 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 no. What, what if we could do it differently, right? And I, I'm guessing you probably did a little bit more research than I have. Oh, shocker. But I'm guessing that they probably floated this concept out. Some people thought they were crazy. Some people thought that'll never work. Some people, probably some of the uh, people that are uh, deeply rooted in the game of golf and the tradition of golf, um, felt like, I oh, know you're undermining, you know, the, the the brand that is golf. When in actuality, it's probably helped. Oh, I would think so. In fact, one of the stats that I read said that in an era where the number of golfers were declining, yeah. that this has helped bring a resurgence back to golf, which I found fascinating because it's not like going and playing a normal golf game, but by going to Top Golf and having that experience is making uh, millennials, because in particular that's sort of their um, demographic segment that yeah. they cater to, but it's making them go, "Hey, I want to learn how to play golf." Yeah, but think about the um, so they've 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 sort of gamified or further gamified the game of golf. So you have these, you can go and you can try to hit in certain areas. Um, but they've made this, added this technology, this digital aspect. I still don't know how that works because it knows whether or not when your bend actually goes into um, one, it gives you the point. Yep. Uh, but the upsell opportunity, the ups because they've got a membership now that you can sign up for. Of course, there's the food and the beverage. It's just a fascinating concept that if they had not said, what if? If they had only looked at what had always been and not tried to further that concept, even though I'm quite confident that somebody looked at them and said, you're crazy. It'll never work. Why would you do that? Too much cost, too much this, too much that. And they pushed forward. And the thing is, they probably, the models certainly gotten refined and tweaked and and worked out perfectly, and I'm sure the technology was not built right away. We talk a lot about starting, right? Just start, because if they had never started with the concept, it would never be. I would never have gone to a Top Golf in Birmingham because it wouldn't have been available. Which sort of leads us to what we really want to talk about today is we're not talking about what we really well, are top golf is part of it that's our story yes. time and yes. now we are moving we're transitioning into, we're transitioning into action that people can take can I, can I say something real quick and interject sure i feel like uh you're acting a little bit more sophisticated with this mic in front of you do you yeah i, I kind of like that yeah. i think we'll see yeah. how long that lasts <laughs> okay <laughs> All right, continue. <laughs> okay, so we want you all to think about the questions that you can ask yourself that would turn your business upside down. I mean, just like, you know, part of me wants to say, you, we do this all the time. We don't necessarily do it about our business, but we do it when we're out with our friends or 
like these twin brothers did where they're like, there's got to be a better, better way to do this, right? Like everybody has had $10 million ideas where someone goes, well, if you could just create this, it would make it better or it would make it more fun. And, and the people that actually think through that and make it happen are the ones that create things like Top Golf. And we have so much fun helping business-minded people expand this because they get it's it's a little bit hard they sort of say i know there's something there but i don't know how we've got this integrated strategy guide that it's sort of a process that we go through to help plot out the steps and that sort of makes it a reality side note my brother-in-law is in town and he's the one he and his wife play in the orchestra in hamilton traveling oh, hamilton kidding. did i tell you we went to on sunday went to atlanta and saw hamilton no you didn't tell me Amazing. that Fabulous. Isn't it fabulous? I it went to New York was. and saw it last year. It's awesome. Janet's seen it. She saw it in New York. And uh, my sister-in-law, Anna, she was a sub in the New York one. And that's how they got this gig in the Traveling Hamilton, which is so cool because they go like three weeks in one city, three weeks in another city. But Gregory is the one that he called me five years ago, whatever it was, and said, hey... I've got this idea to help out. This guy wants me to help him with uh, a competition. And what do I charge per hour? So fast forward, he, he, I told him, hey, do this, do this, do this. Position it this way. Use this integrated strategy guide to help lay this out for this high net worth individual and show them the path. And then say, I can help you with this. And right, and so and so he sold that. He's they've now delivered on that. And he's like, the competition went amazing. It was just phenomenal. And now there's sort of this two-year gap until they need to have the next competition. And so, you know, it's kind of that's kind of kind of lulled. I was like, no, 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 no. Because now this same person, he just invested a lot of money into this competition. He needs a new vision, a new a new um, integrated strategy guide that shows him the marketing that needs to be done over the next 18 months to tee up the next competition so that his investment really pays off. And he's in town, so that's so cool. So y'all are like brainstorming what you'll well, have to keep. Him, you'll I have just, to keep us up to date and let us I know what the decision is on that. I just told him to come by the office. And really? We can wrap oh, I can't this thing wait. Up. Yeah, oh, yeah, how yeah. fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can like brand script it too. Yes. Yes. Okay, I All right, do let, let's, you, yeah. Sorry. So, squirrel. So, here we go. Three questions that we're going to talk about in terms of how do you, how do you figure this out? How do you turn your business upside down? And I think one of the first ones is, you know, what are the self-limiting beliefs? And I think people get... Yeah, so first question is, what are the self-limiting beliefs? What are those? How do you suggest they get those out? Write them down. Write them down. Don't just, you think? Or just so if you're, brainstorm. If you're, if you're old school, you have a driving range, you would say, I can only have 10 people at a time. I can only sell buckets of balls in small, medium, and large. I can't, I can't sell snacks or food. I can't do anything except for tell people how far they hit. Right? Those are all self-limiting beliefs. It's the... I've always done it this way, or the industry has always done it this way, ah. or we have to do it because it's always been done this way. It's always been done this way, and so we have to do it this way. That's a cage. That's a self-limiting belief, okay? First step, document those, right? No, Just definitely. Write them, them down. down. I would say writing them down is the best way yeah. because then you've got to go back through and go, okay, what would I do differently? And by the way... You, this does not happen over lunch or over coffee and like a 30-minute exercise. Write them down, step away, go back to it, step away, go back to it. This is a comprehensive sort of process that you go through to determine what are the things that are restraining me. That, by the way, I've accepted. Oh, and said it's the norm and yeah. said we have to do it this yeah. way. And then I think the next step is just because it's working doesn't mean it couldn't work better. So, you know, the, the guys that are on the driving range saying, how do we do this differently? It works. I mean, a driving range 
works. But they're like, how do we make it better? But you know why it worked? Because everybody just said this is the way it is. Because it was tied. It was sort of a warm up thing before you went and played golf. Right. Right. But what if you didn't play golf? Well, like you. Like me. Like, and, well, I tried. I tried. Okay, so you said you had a story. It is so okay. funny. So when I started, at, uh, I, first of all, I've got uh, an older sister, an older brother, and a younger brother, okay? And all of them have much more hand-eye coordination than me. Like, I can run straight at times. <laughs> Outside of that, you know, it's probably <laughs> it's not a whole lot. Anyway, so my older brother, my grandfather, um, said... Hey, do you boys want to go play golf? I'll take you to play golf. Well, my older brothers have said, yes, I'll do it. And he, so he went every weekend with my grandfather to learn. And he has hand-eye coordination. So he's a pretty good golfer. Me, not so much. So when I start in uh, at Arthur Anderson, my good buddy Carter Breyer says, hey, uh, we, you need to learn how to play golf because it's a good sort of take your client out. Sort of. And I said, man, I don't, I don't really play golf. He's like, well, you need to learn. So, you know me, I get um, I get the right gear. So at least I look the part. You always look the part. That <laughs> so, is very anyway, true. Anyway, so I start, I go to driving ranges, took a couple lessons and, and, um, and, you know, you know, you strike a ball good, maybe every now and again, went out and played around up. I, the, the thing I would do is I'd just buy a pack of 18 balls, lose a lot, pick up a few along the way and end with one. <laughs> Is that a good day if you brought one in? Uh, and, I, and I really didn't care, right? So fast forward, we, we had a, um, a I was working on a client in Mississippi, Washington Furniture Manufacturer, and the CFO was a guy named Mark Holly. And Mark loved to play golf. And the, uh, the partner, brand new partner, a guy named David Turner, who's now the CFO at Regions Bank, and he had just made partner. And had just joined this new country club, and David played baseball at Alabama, and Mark Holly played baseball. At Alabama. I mean, so like the, they they they're, they're all good, and they're Carter's athletes. good at golf, right? And so, so I had this uh, this in Mark's coming up from Mississippi. We we're playing golf on a Friday, going to David's new country club to sort of go out there, and I had this um, idea that I'd get out there before everyone to warm up. So. Um, that didn't happen. Like we got rushed, we got, and we pull up, and they're like, "Okay, you can go swing a few, but we just gotta, you gotta jump, or you're gonna lose your spot." So we get up there, and I like, have you ever felt like your um, your shoulders are connected to your ears? Like you're you're so just tense, tense, right? That was me. And so there I go, you know. And David's got this funny accent. He's like, "I don't care, going up, get up there." So I go up to the tee box, and I'm like, you know, trying to like, I'm trying to. <laughs> To like just y'all. I wish you could <laughs> see Carrie is acting out what how I'm, he was trying. I'm to trying like to like loosen, loosen my shoulders, shoulders. And, and make them go down because they. And I actually, as I tell this story, I'm, I'm freaking You're tensing just, up. It's like, I'm scarred for life. I'm scarred for life. So anyway, I get up there, and I take the. I you know go back, and I look, and then I look down, and the ball's still there. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh. So I look back. Of course, David likes They're to go. Rolling. So yeah. David's already on me. He's like wearing me out. <laughs> Carter is like, gives me that sort of, you know. He's a true Calm friend. down. Calm down. Got it. Right. So I go back. <sighs> Ball's still there. No. Yeah. yeah. So I look back at Carter. My eyes are huge. I'm like, oh my gosh. I am going to get fired. Right. So I look back at Carter. And he goes, aim 10 feet below the ball. <laughs> So, so I say, okay, so I, I am 10 feet below the ball and I barely sculled it and just rolls past ladies tees, which saved me a lot of embarrassment. So we go and we get in the car and Carter's like, it's like, drink this beer right now. Right. <laughs> so fast forward, we get to, um, we get to, um, nine, the nine hole and it's a dog leg left. Right. At this point. I am, uh, I'm, I'm last. I'm teeing off last because I'm like, by a mile, like awful. And, and so David and Mark are riding in a cart and they hit it perfectly right where the bend is. And so they go ahead and go off to the right, right? Off and they're sitting there, park the cart. 
chatting, right? Carter hits a good shot. I go, and I didn't hit a ball. If you added up all of my shots, I couldn't reach David and Mark. Well, somehow, I got to hold this ball. And it's a dog leg left. And they're off to the right. And like a, like, like a heat-seeking missile, I go, and it's, and, and Carter goes, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Four! Literally split the Nuh-uh. cart. They both dove out of both sides of the cart. Now, keep in mind, this is a CFO, the client, and the partner that dove out of the cart no. because I split it right through the middle. No yes. way. So, right. The, the, <laughs> the, criticism, the, the criticism was just like mounting. At this point, <laughs> I'm a little buzzy. I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. If I get fired, I'll find another job. So we're on 18 now. We're on 18 <laughs> And you, you you go up and it's sort of a it, it's a it comes up to the top and it's a little hill and then you can see the clubhouse right and so I hit a decent shot I'm right up there and they're all parked behind me like all right Kerry come and just at least hit one last shot you know do something and I literally I'm trying at this point I'm just trying to like I just save some face here right just get through it and so I take a swing and a patch of grass about the size of a <laughs> softball. <laughs> Literally <laughs> lifts up and goes over the ball. <laughs> okay, now and the, I understand. And the ball's still there, right? And all I did was create a hole in the earth. <laughs> so oh I picked my, my ball up and I threw it towards the green. And that's that would be the end. My golf story. That's, that is no wonder. Okay, for those of you listening, Carrie would not tell me this story before. He's like, I got a great golf story. I was like, Well, tell me. He's like, I'm not telling you until we're in the midst of the podcast because he said I want to hear your reaction. So uh, this is the first time it's I've all heard this story. One hundred percent. This is the awesome. Most, one of the more embarrassing moments. But oh my gosh, it is. It's. it's it's fun. That it's is fun. that is completely yeah. fun. But anyway, anyway if, so, if someone's so unlocking their cage vision unlocking, yes. can get me back swinging a golf club, there you go. That's pretty good. That is pretty darn good. And that's someone that who has some vision, right? So yeah. the next part after you look at your so self-learning team, question please, question we're on the second okay, question. Okay, I'm trying to keep you on track here. Is that because I, of course, am the one that needs to be kept on track, right? So if it's not, because it's not working, it doesn't mean that it couldn't be better. And I think that... This oh, because it, it is working. Because it is working doesn't, doesn't, mean, doesn't it mean it couldn't work better. And right. I think that this is where, you know, um, for example, Steve Jobs and his vision for Apple and the phone. And bringing I remember the story is the engineers were all excited and they brought in like the first prototype for the phone and he was like this is not going to work and they were like what what do you mean it's not going to work it's it's beautiful you know and he goes I don't there will be no buttons There, there will be no buttons on the front and the engineers were like no no no, you don't understand we we have to have buttons on the front and it, it this is how this works and he was like no uh, there will be no buttons so go back and try again and I think that is just the for me anyway it's the prime example of the self-limiting self-limiting beliefs you know the engineers were was always been done this way it has to be done this way and then he has this vision of well just because it's working doesn't mean we can't make it better and then yes. sending so, them back. Yeah, okay. So the pro tip here is once you've documented all the self-limiting beliefs, now go outside of your industry, which is what Steve Jobs That's did. That's exactly what he and did. And he said, what else is working in other businesses that we're not doing here and how could it apply? And that's what he did, which is what created the iPhone. Exactly. Because then the next... As we know it. As we know it. And then so then the next question or the next thing is, if I weren't constrained by these self-limitating limitations, what would it look like? Right. You know? So his vision was, I want this phone that is touchscreen that's not... That doesn't have buttons on the front. But until... So he had that, right? Because he looked outside and said, what if? But until he communicated that effectively to the engineers, they couldn't actually make the product, right? Correct. So those are your three questions to help you think about how you can unlock your business potential, how you can go beyond what's always been, crush those self-limiting beliefs, think outside of the box, and actually get something moving. Yeah? 
Yeah. This is a good show. This is a good show. I think it's the mics. I'm so inspired by the mics. I think maybe it is the mics. I really like this mic. This is fun. Yes. Listen, if you want encouragement and confidence around building your business, continue listening to the show. We talk about Cage Vision. We talk about unlocking and each week. If you want more encouragement, more confidence, faster, you're ready to go, give us a call. Send us an email, right? And you can email us directly at crome at cypressresources.com. Or, or if you want a more prompt response, you can email lbeck at cypressresources.com. <laughs> Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week.